Sometimes in sport, as in life, you just have to roll the dice. Renault Le Vianney of France is competing in the biggest event of his sporting life, the men's pole vault final at the 2012 Olympic Games in London. And he's gambling everything on one jump. You see, he's currently in the bronze medal position and he's missed his last two attempts. If he makes this one, he'll move into the gold medal position. If he misses, he still comes third, an admirable achievement for most athletes. But then Le Vianney isn't most athletes. To understand why a man would willingly take a risk in a moment like this, you need to know more about Renault Le Vianney. Le Vianney likes risk. He likes living on the edge. Not many world-class athletes relax racing motorbikes, but it works for him. The French have a long history of excellence when it comes to Le Vianney's favoured event. Jean-Gaël Fioni was the second Frenchman to win an Olympic gold medal with this jump back in 1996. For Le Vianney, pole vault isn't just a French thing, it's a family thing. His father, Gilles Le Vianney, was a vaulter. His brother, Valentin, also got the vaulting bug at a young age. They never had to have the pole vault explained to them, but for the rest of us, here's a quick guide. The athlete stands at the end of a 40 meter long track, carrying a long metal pole wrapped in sheets of fiberglass. They sprint down the track, place the tip of the pole into the launch box. As they jump up, the pole bends dramatically. They attempt to pass over the horizontal bar, releasing the pole. They come back down to earth onto padded matting to break their fall. And then they get up and do it all over again. Most of us will stick to one of life's simpler pursuits like neurosurgery. I always thought pole vaulting was jumping over Polish people. No, Jan. This was Levini's life. Although at 1 meter 77, he was on the small side for a successful pole vaulter. Attempting to qualify for the 2008 Olympic Games in Beijing, young Renault missed the qualifying distance by 45 centimeters. He did not give up. He doubled his efforts. He even built a full-size pole vault track in his back garden in clermont ferrand Le Vianney was now targeting London 2012 as his performances steadily improved. In 2009, Le Vianney landed his first major title, jumping 5 meters 81 to win the European Indoor Championship. And just three months later, he joined pole vaulter's six-meter club. In just two years, Levini had improved his personal best by over 70 centimetres to become world number one. But reputations don't win gold medals. At the Olympic Games in London, he was up against a heavyweight. Defending Olympic champion Steve Hooker of Australia and the USA's Brad Walker, a former world champion, failed to mount any kind of challenge. As others fell by the wayside, that left just three remaining athletes to fight it out for gold. Le Vianney and two Germans, the youngster Raphael Holtstepper and veteran Bjorn Otto. The bar was now raised to 5 meters 91. Holtstepper cleared it. Otto cleared it. Le Vianney didn't clear it, which left him a choice. With two more attempts left, he could either try them at this height or he could raise the bar. If he could pull out one big jump, it would put him in sole possession of the top spot and put the pressure on the others. Le Vianney decided to go for it. The bar was raised to 5 meters 97. Bold, ambitious, unsuccessful. Which brings us back to where we started. Le Vianney, one more shot, one more chance at glory. Everything was riding on this one jump. A new Olympic record at 5 meters 97. That would about jump to T-Rex. When Otto failed at 6.2 in his final attempt, Le Vianney had won Olympic gold. The two Germans were very strong, so it pushed me in my limits. The limits indeed. But that's where Le Vianney likes to be. It's a dream. Well, 